Hi, my name's Paul Grogan and welcome to the Gaming Rules video log for the month of February 2021. This video is going to contain pretty much everything that I've done since the last video log, which was around the middle of January, all of the games that I've been playing, other stuff that I've been doing, a bit of personal use, all the usual stuff. Thank you as always to all of my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Uh, a lot of the videos that I create on the channel, like this one, are only made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon page. So if you do like the content that I create and you want to help support the channel uh, and become part of the Gaming Rules community, you can support me at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. And my first question is, if you're watching this, please leave me a comment in the, in the video. Um, but I'm curious as to what part of these video logs are you most interested in? Because I normally start with all of the games that I've been playing, and a lot of people, I think, like that the best. But then I cover various other things in the video log as well. So yeah, let me know in the comments which your favourite part of these video logs are. Right, we're going to start with the games that I've been playing. And I'm going to do something a little different this time, because I'm not going to cover these completely in chronological order. And we're going to start with Too Many Bones. And the reason is, I played five games of Too Many Bones since the last video log, right? Which is a lot. Um, 15th of January, 18th of January, 25th of January, 28th of January, and the 10th of February, okay? And what I didn't want to do is I didn't want to cover all of the games I played in chronological order because there's five Too Many Boneses and it would all get split up. So I'm, all of the Too Many Bones are going to be talked about right now, all in one go. And all of these videos are on the channel now. So if you want to see me any of the content that I've created for Too Many Bones, all these five games were live streamed. None of them were sponsored. So again, this was all funded through the Patreon page, but I've got, I don't know, what's that? 15, 20 hours of content for Too Many Bones? Probably about 15, I think. It's all there on the channel. The one on the 15th was effectively a tutorial and playthrough game. And the reason for this is Too Many Bones is one of those games that I really struggled to learn. I really struggled to get into. And then even when I did manage to learn it, thank you very much to David Ellis for going through it with me step by step and teaching me. After that game, and that was like my fourth game of it, I was like, right, I, I get it now. I get the basic rules of the game. But one of the um, hurdles, obstacles with learning too many bones is not only learning the basic rules of the game, and I have to be honest, the rule book isn't that particularly great, um, is then learning the character. And each character works in a very different way. And the character reference sheet that you get makes sense once you know the game, makes sense once you know the character, but I, would, I think I'm pretty good with rules and I'm pretty good at understanding complex games. And learning a new character in Too Many Bones is a sheet of shorthand information with some symbols and iconography that it, it doesn't fully explain it, I have to say. So even when you know Too Many Bones, if you then play a new character for the first time, it's like, well, what does this do? And how does that work? It's really, in my opinion, it's not that clear. And I know fans of the game will say, oh, it's perfectly clear. And I'm, yeah, if you're a fan of the game and you've played that character a dozen times, Yes, I'm sure, it, I'm sure it is clear, but for somebody like me trying to get into it, the amount of questions I've had to ask, and I'm not stupid. Anyway, the whole, one of my reasons for doing <clears throat> what I did in January um, was to learn Too Many Bones properly, because Too Many Bones, so many people say it's a great game, okay? I've got friends of mine who it's their number one favourite game, and I know so many people who love the game, and I'm like, well, I must be missing something. And one of the things that I definitely uh, makes me feel uncomfortable when I'm playing games and therefore makes me not enjoy the games is when I don't get the rules, okay? And I'm like this with a lot of complex games is it takes me a few games to learn it and then when I eventually learn it, I'm like, wow, this game's great. But that hurdle, that, that, that work that you have to put in to get there is something that I do because I like complex games. But with Too Many Bones, I really struggled. And I found that over the times that I've played it in the past, it was going too long between games that I was forgetting bits. Uh, and then, obviously, trying to learn a new character, thinking, oh, I know how to play the game now, let's pull a new character out, and completely drowning. Uh, the game that I did, the live game with Jeremy Howard, where I played Lab Rats, that, that wasn't a great experience for me. I mean, it was great to play a game with Jeremy, that was good, and the chat was there, and it was great, but... I, I literally spent three hours not having the faintest idea what I was doing and not even understanding what I was doing. That was the struggle I had. Anyway, going back to, let's talk about the here and now. Five games of Too Many Bones later, and I've already talked about this and I've, I, I've recently done a top 10 video where I mentioned it. Um, the whole point of me repeatedly playing the game was to get to grips with the game. And I, I, I now have done that. 
And you can see this process along. So the first video I did on the 15th uh, of January, that was a tutorial and playthrough. That was me having learnt the game, and that was me teaching you how to play the game whilst playing through it. The other four videos are more playthroughs. So if you want to know Too Many Bones, if you want to see it, I would recommend the first video in the series, 15th of January. Then watch the other playthroughs afterwards. But if you jump straight into one of the playthroughs, where I don't actually explain what I'm doing, you're going to struggle to learn how to play the game. So the idea of the series was for me to get comfortable with the game, learn the basics of it, and then start experimenting with different characters. So, mission successful. I now think Too Many Bones is a great game. I'm not saying it's perfect. I have some issues with some of the weird rulings uh, in the game. Uh, and, and, you know, and I still think the characters, there needed to be a, a better, more descriptive guide. And I, I, I don't mean guide as in tips and tricks on how to play the character, but actually understanding what's written on the piece of paper. Um, so, 15th of January, two-player game with Scott Hill. Patches and Nugget versus Nom. Then I did a solo playthrough on the 18th where I played Patches again. So again, playing the same character a second time. I uh, did a solo game against Goblin King. Then on the 25th, Scott joined me again and we played Boomer and Gasket. And we played against Mulmesh. This was me playing Boomer. Then on the 28th, I played a game with Rick where I played Boomer. He played Nugget. We played against Drell and Paleface. And then on the 10th, I did a solo playthrough where I played Boomer again against Duster. So I've played Patches twice and I've played Boomer three times. I'm now mostly comfortable with those characters, but it took me three games with Boomer before I started to fully understand, and I don't fully understand, but until I, until I became comfortable with playing the character. And thank you very much to everybody in the chat uh, and on the, uh, the Chip Theory Games Discord channel that have helped me uh, with some of the, the rulings uh, and, and help and advice on you know, how to play the character. Not, not advice uh, on tips, although some people have given me tips on how to play, but more the rules questions. How does this skill actually work? So, moving forward, um, I now get why Too Many Games is very popular. Um, it's certainly not my number one favourite game of all time, but I do really enjoy playing it, okay? And that last game I played, where I soloed Boomer against Duster, it was great. I really enjoy the game. I can I have so much respect for the game, the amount of time and effort and work that's gone into it. Um, and what I'm going to do, uh, at the end of January, I said, right, my mission accomplished. I have now learned how to play Too Many Bones, and I now feel comfortable with the core rules of Too Many Bones, but this can't end here, okay? I, need, I want to keep playing Too Many Bones, so I have decided the second Wednesday of every month, from now going forward, will be Too Many Bones night. That's why I did it on the 10th of February. So I will be back on the second Wednesday of every month doing Too Many Bones. It'll be a mixture of solo plays, uh, uh, multiplayer playthroughs. Um, I will be gradually starting to put in some stuff from the expansion sets uh, as I go along. Uh, and yeah, more, more on that later on. Right, moving forward, because that's enough about Too Many Bones, let's talk about another of my favourite games that I'm loving at the moment. This is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. Another thing that I set myself as a, as a goal to do in January was to actually play the campaign of this game because I've had this game since it came out and I've played Scenario 1 like three times and, I, and I've started with the campaign and I've got as far as like Scenario 4 before but then oh, it just fizzles out and I thought no this is, this is crazy. This is a campaign style game that I really want to play so let's just do it but it's going to take a while okay uh, and since the last video log I've played it four times, the 19th of January, the 20th of January, the 26th of January, the 9th of February. I'm not finished. The campaign is not finished. In fact, I'm recording this video log on Wednesday, the 17th of February. I'm playing again tonight. And I don't think tonight's session is going to be the last one. I think I've got about two sessions left. So I'll have tonight's session and then another one at the start of March. And then that will be the end of the campaign. What do I think of Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth? Well, I would go and recommend checking out my top 10 games of 2019 video, which I released earlier on this year, because Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth is in there, okay? So if you want to know more about what I think about it, it's in that video. But bear in mind, since I recorded that video, I've played it about six or seven more times, so I'm still loving it. In fact, I'm loving it even more. I think the game is great. And I get some of the negative criticisms about the game, about the repetitive nature of some of the repeating text and it's all just a bit of flavour and get an get a inspiration token. But the story is great, the campaign is great, and I'm only playing the base game. People have said that the expansion and the extra DLC campaigns are brilliant. 
As of last night, I have just finished painting the last of the miniatures um, because I wanted to get them finished last night because I think I might need them in tonight's game. More on the painting later, but that is Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-earth. Uh, and as I say, the, uh, by the time this video goes live, I will have done another one, which is tonight. Right, next, another campaign game that I started in January, which unfortunately I haven't finished, uh, which means I'm going to have to carry on doing it. This is Maracaibo. Maracaibo is brilliant. I love Maracaibo as a game, and Great Western Trail has always been my favourite Alexander Fister game. I say always, since it came out. But Maracaibo, for me, has just pipped it. I think, possibly, Great Western Trail might be the better game. Might. I'm not. I'm really not sure between them. But Maracaibo has a built-in solo mode and a built-in campaign, and I love the campaign for Maracaibo. I'm really enjoying these playthroughs. There's four of them. Uh, well, there's loads of them on the channel now. I think there's like six, maybe, on the channel now. Um, but I did four since the last video log. 21st of January, 28th of January, 5th of February, 11th of February, and I'm playing through the solo campaign mode of Maracaibo, and I'm absolutely loving it. It's really, really good, um, and yeah, it's just great. I, I, don't, I don't know what else to say about Maracaibo, other than I think it's a fantastic game, and the game is a great game. The campaign mode adds a little bit extra and is completely not needed. I would be happy to play Maracaibo over and over and over again, just the base game, but the campaign system in it adds extra story and extra things to do, and it's, it's just really nice. So, yeah, you can play it without the campaign, you can play it with the campaign, it's completely up to you. Great game. Right, that is all of the games that I've played multiple times in the last four weeks. That's a lot of playthroughs. And again, none of those playthroughs were sponsored in any way. They're all purely made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So, huge thank you to my Patreon supporters again. Tomb of Bones, Lord of the Rings, Maracaibo. Right, moving on. Other games that I played in the last four weeks, there's quite a few. Let's have a drink. 20th of January, The Red Cathedral, or Red Cathedral as most people are calling it. Um, this is a great game. Came out at the end of last year, um, and it's one which came out... A lot of people have said this is a sort of hidden gem under the radar game. I don't think it's under the radar. It's not like a big popular game from a huge publisher, but everybody I know who's played this game has said it's really good. And then I finally managed to get it played last year, and it is great. So I've got on my channel a multiplayer playthrough of the game, but if you want to see a solo playthrough of the game, that's on the channel as well. I did it on the 20th of January. It was a great, it's a great solo mode. I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't even remember if I won or not, but yeah, The Red Cathedral, Fantastic game, one of the best games that came out last year. I can see why people have said it's sort of a, a hidden gem. If you're interested in it, go and check it out. It's in a small box, but there's a lot of game packed into that small box. Next, on the 22nd of January, I did another solo playthrough. Um, in fact, it's mostly solo playthroughs in the last four weeks. Um, Viscounts of the West Kingdom. Now, I'd played Viscounts of the West Kingdom multiplayer using the official tabletop simulator mod. Uh, but this was my first time playing it solo, and it's another game that I'd heard really good things about. Lots of people have said the solo mode is great, lots of my Patreon supporters have played the solo mode a whole bunch of times, and I thought, well, I've got to give this a go. And I've got Paladins of the West Kingdom, and I've got Viscounts of the West Kingdom, and I, and I wanted to cover one of them in January, and I wasn't sure which one. And I went for Viscounts, and I'm glad I did. Having played Architects of the West Kingdom once, Paladins of the West Kingdom once, and Viscounts of the West Kingdom once, Viscounts is my favourite one of the three. As I say, I've only played each one of them once, but Viscounts was my favourite one. And the solo mode was really good. So that's on the channel as well. All, all of these videos are on the channel. If you want to go and see it, it's on there. Just, just give it a search. That was, on the, that, was, that was in the afternoon of Friday the 22nd. On the evening of Friday the 22nd, I got together with David Turtsey and played uh, Keeper remotely. So this is using a physical game. I was sharing my screen with David over Skype uh, so that he could see what was going on. Um, and Dave, I, I wanted to do a, a live video with David at some point in January, uh, and we were talking about what games to cover, and one of the games that David suggested was Keeper. Now, he may have had an ulterior motive for suggesting that, because there is an expansion coming out for Keeper later on this year, and David's designed the solo mode for it. However, I also have a vested interest in, in, in playing the game because I was due to do some work professionally on the game 
Um, and I need to remind myself how to play the base game. So it all worked out well. Uh, that's on the channel now. David absolutely slaughtered me because I was relearning how to play and didn't have a clue what I was doing. Uh, and Dave is really good at games. Um, spoiler, David won. Um, <laughs> that, that was clear fairly early on in the video. Anyway, that is Keeper, designed by Richard Breeze, a uh, live two-player playthrough with David Turtsey. That's on the channel now. On the 27th of January, I played Bonfire Solo. Bonfire is a game uh, designed by Stefan Feld, published by Hall Games. Stefan Feld is one of my favourite designers. Uh, Bonfire is really good. I was professionally involved in creating the tutorial video on how to play the game. Um, uh, what was I going to say? But I've never, I'd never played the solo game. So I'd played it multiplayer, but I'd never played the solo game. And I think, uh, I think my patron supporters helped me decide uh, which games I would play, do solo playthroughs of in January. And that's, that's one of the ones that they chose. I really enjoyed it. I can't remember how well I did. I don't think I won. I think I lost. You play against Tom, which is the Automa, um, and I came away from that game thinking, I want to play this again straight away. Now, I didn't because, you know, not enough time, too many games. But yeah, solo playthrough of Bonfire. If you want to see me play that, that's on the channel now. On the 3rd of February, I did two games of Trajan. Now, one of those was live streamed. The other one was not. The reason I've recorded two games of Trajan is I actually had a practice game in the afternoon uh, with one of my Patreon supporters um, to basically relearn how to play the game. Because in the evening, uh, I taught two other people how to play the game. And I didn't, whilst that, I, I think I remember how to play Trajan, it's been a while and I didn't feel comfortable doing a live stream teaching other people without practicing it first. So I took the afternoon off work. Uh, I had a game of it, uh, as I say, against one of my patron supporters, which we live streamed as a, as a behind the scenes video uh, for my other patron supporters who wanted to watch along. And then in the evening did an actual live stream where I, where I taught, you know, other, two other people how to play the game uh, and we played it. Um, uh, Russell Chapman from uh, For Chits and Giggles, he was one of the people that I was teaching how to play uh, and he won. Uh, Russell's quite good at games. Um, he'd never played it before. And yeah, he managed to win. Um, and yeah, Jill was in the game as well. It was, in fact, it was Jill's suggestion. Uh, another of my patron supporters, Jill, got a copy of the game uh, earlier in the week and said, um, you know, Paul, you haven't done a video on this. How am I supposed to learn how to play? And I thought, well, I'll tell you what, I'm free this Friday. Why don't we do a live stream where I teach you how to play? So we did that. Trajan, my favourite Stefan Feld game. Um, again, if you want to see me playing it, <clears throat> excuse me, um, not just playing it, but that is a tutorial and playthrough video. So if you want to learn how to play Trajan, you can do that by going online and watching it on the channel. We did use a website to play the game. It wasn't a physical game because it's the kind of game that's hard to play remotely because you have a hand of cards and it's supposed to be secret. Um, so we used a French website called Voix Chageur, um, which is how you can play the game remotely. Right, next, on the 5th of February, I sort of played... Keeper at Sea. <clears throat> now, I did log this as a game played, but to be honest, I didn't actually play a full game. So, on the 5th of February, I was doing some commissioned work for Richard Breeze on testing his rule book for Keeper at Sea. As mentioned earlier, Keeper at Sea is an expansion that's coming out later this year for Keeper. And basically, Richard contacted me. Uh, I'm going to be creating a video for Keeper at Sea later on this year, but you also wanted me to check the rule book for the game. Um, so what I did is I got together with Hilmar, one of my patron supporters, and we tried playing the game from the rulebook that Richard had written for the expansion set. Uh, so it was, it, wasn't, it was sort of play, I wanted to play the game because I enjoy Keeper, but it was more, we are here to test the rulebook of the game, to see if the rulebook is clear. And unfortunately, um, because the game comes with two modes, there's a shallow water version and a deep water version, we, in, in a three hour period, we managed to read and learn the rules for shallow water and then play it a bit. And then we went, right, that bit's done. Uh, do we want to now carry on playing shallow water so that we actually play a full game? Which means we then won't have time to test the deep water rules. Or do we just say, like, let's stop this game now and go and let's test the other one. So we did, we stopped that game. I think we played one round of it. Um, and then we thought, right, we know that. That rule book has been tested. Now we move on to the deep water rules. The deep water rules are a lot more complex. 
Um, so we ended up playing about a round of that as well. So I didn't actually play a full game of Keeper. It was two partial games testing the new rulebook for the expansion. On the 6th of February and also on the 13th of February, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective Box 4, Baker Street Irregulars. I have spoken about this game on every video log for the last few months because we've been playing it for the last few months. I'm sad to say we've now finished, okay? It was emotional. Um, and the reason, one of the reasons for that is I first got the original game, Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, back in 1982 or 83 on holiday with my parents in a caravan, right? I have been playing Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective with every gaming group that I've ever been a member of, everywhere I've been, all around the country, for the last 38 years, okay? I'm a huge fan of the game. It's just brilliant. I absolutely love the game. And Box 4 is by far the best one yet, okay? Now, I'm saying that I've become friends with Dave Neal, who wrote them, but bias... I don't, I don't have any bias. I'm calling, I'm calling it as it is. The, the, the cases, the writing, the, the, the way that they're, they're so clever, the stories in box four. And I've said, I, I say this every month. If you haven't played Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective and you were wondering where to start, start with box four. You do not need to start with box one. In fact, box four is so much better than box one. Um, and if you've heard that there were problems with the translations and the wording, that's box three. Box four is absolutely fine. There's a couple of minor typos, but don't worry about that. Um, and it's just brilliant. It's really good. So I'm sad that it has ended, but what a game. What a game. Really, really enjoying that. Um, we've been playing that. Me and Vicky have been playing that with Rick and Victoria uh, over uh, video call. They've got a copy of the game. We've got the game. We take it in turns to read out clue points. It's a brilliant game for playing remotely. Um, and it's just fantastic. And yeah, sad that it's come to an end, but... We are now going back to box three because I've only ever played case one of box three and I was really put off because of the, it, it wasn't uh, it wasn't edited or proofread by a native English speaker and that is very apparent. Um, but we're gonna go back to it uh, because that's, we've done all of the other ones. So we'll see how we get on. Right, on February the 8th, this is another rule book test. Um, so again, I'm, I'm gonna talk about this a bit, but this doesn't really count as a game played, although I did play one game. Right, this is Stars of Akarios, a successful Kickstarter from last year. Um, the designer contacted me uh, and asked me if I would be happy to get involved in doing some testing for him. Uh, and I said, yep, yeah, I'll do a rulebook test. So uh, like I mentioned earlier on with Keeper at Sea, a rulebook test is where a publisher or a designer basically hires me to try and play their game from the rulebook. And I do this uh, by means of a live video because it's the best way of doing it, okay? If, if before I could do live videos, this wasn't possible, right? If, if a designer had said to me, Paul, I've got a game, uh, we've written a rule book, I want you to test that the rule book's okay, I would have had to get the game, I'd have probably got friends around, can't do that at the moment. We'd have sat down, we'd have read through the rule book, we'd have tried to play the game. I would have then had to feed back every single bit of information about everything that would have happened. That would have taken hours and hours and hours. Now what I do is I basically go through the same process, but I live stream it to a private video, okay? The designer gets to see the video and my patron supporters uh, get access to it because it's, it's a kind of, it's a behind the scenes video. It will never go public and it will never be public, but it is me working on testing the rule book. And that way, and I spent, that day, I think it was a six hour video. I split it into two parts, but I basically spent, yeah, it was either six or seven hours. It was, it was a long day because it's a big game. There's a big rule book. There was a lot to learn, but that way I did all of that. And then Brendan, the designer of the game, over the course of that week, watched the video, the videos, and then made loads and loads of changes to the rule book. And the advantage of doing it over a video, and I'm not trying to sell my services here, but for anybody who's watching who thinks this, this is interesting, this is the way to do it. Because literally seeing somebody live on camera get the rule book and read of it and go, what, that doesn't make sense. Or, oh, there's a typo there, or whatever. Suddenly you're getting instant live feedback on the rule book 
And as I say, in terms of time efficiency, I then didn't have to spend another seven hours writing everything up because it was all there. It was all on the video. Anyway, that is Stars of a Karyos. That is a sci-fi campaign game that uh, was successful on Kickstarter. It's coming out later this year. Uh, and I was professionally involved. Brendan asked me to get involved in it, so I can't really give you my personal opinion, but I can't wait to get a copy of the game and play it. There you go. Moving on. Uh, <clears throat> 10th of February, we did a, a this, is, this was a test. This is the Detective Society Season 2, Episode 2. Not technically a board game. It's more of a puzzle, escape room style game type thing. But yeah, the Detective Society, we're involved in testing that. Uh, a number of you watching this um, get the Detective Society. You, you backed it on Kickstarter uh, and you get it coming to you. So yeah, season two, episode two, we have just tested. Um, next, on the 12th. So this was Friday. Yeah, this was last Friday. Um, as voted on by my patron supporters, I did Cloud Age. Now I'd, I'd previously done Cloud Age. I did a unboxing, Paul learns how to play the game and then playing it from the rulebook video. And I kind of wanted to play it again because I'd only played it once. <laughs> and I was like, well, this is good. I enjoyed this. Um, but I put the vote out to my Patreon supporters. I said, look, Friday the 12th, I've got a free evening. I'm going to do a solo game. What do you want me to do? And the votes came in and Cloud Age was chosen. So on my channel, last Friday, it's there now. If you want to go and watch it, I play through chapters two and three of the campaign for Cloud Age. Uh, again, it's another game similar to Maracaibo where there is a standalone game. And then there's the campaign, and you don't have to play the campaign, or you can play the campaign. It's completely up to you. Um, and what I did is I actually did, uh, it was a playthrough and review. So rather than just a playthrough, I actually had a 15-minute session at the end of the video where I give my review of the game. So rather than releasing a separate review for Cloud Age, if you want to know what I think of it, go and check out my playthrough video from last Friday, and actually just skip to the end and watch the last 15 minutes or so, because that's where I give you uh, a review. Okay, we're almost up to date now. So, um, Streets. I'm doing a video on this starting tomorrow, I think. Um, I'm, I'm creating the how to play video for Streets. It was successful on Kickstarter. It's being delivered to backers, I believe, in a few weeks time. And I'm gonna be creating the tutorial video on how to play the game. So part of that process is I've got to learn how to play. And I did another behind the scenes video for my patron supporters where I unboxed the game, read through the rule book and then played it. OK, uh, so that's not on the channel now. It will never go public. It's only as a behind the scenes video. But the designer was watching. The publisher was watching anything that I got stuck on. They would be there to help me. Um, I didn't, the rule book's pretty good, so I, I didn't really get stuck on anything, but there were a couple of bits I was like, have I done that right? And they just sent me a message in the chat and said, yep, you're doing it right. And I was like, okay, cool. So I have played a full game of Street. I played a two-player game, uh, me and me, um, to learn how to play in preparation for doing the video later this week. And the script is now written. Finally, Stroganov. Not Mushroom Stroganov, not Beef Stroganov, but Stroganov, the new game, from Game Brewer. It's on Kickstarter right now. It went on Kickstarter on Monday, designed by Andreas Stedding, and I did a tutorial and solo playthrough on Monday night. So I've actually got two recorded plays of this because on Monday afternoon, I played through the solo game. Again, very similar to Streets. It was a private video for my patron supporters and for the publisher of the game to be there and check that I was playing it correctly. Okay? And all of that was all preparation for the evening. So if you think when you watch my videos that go live to the public, that, oh, Paul's just got the game out and off he goes, he's played it. No. Every game that I put on my channel, there is a huge amount of work that needs to be done beforehand. And a lot of that is, like I've been saying, is these behind the scenes videos that I've been doing for Patreon supporters, which is right. So Paul's doing Stroganoff tonight, live, public, as part of the Kickstarter campaign. He needs to learn it. He needs to learn it. He needs to play it. He needs to practice it. And since I'm in the studio and it's all set up, I might as well live stream it to patron supporters. Um, but the other advantage is that by doing it, Rudy was there from, from Game Brewer in the chat in the afternoon. He said, Paul, you've got that rule wrong. And I was like, oh, well, well, that's what it says in the rule book. He went, oh, yeah, the rule book's wrong. Right. Make sure you play it like this tonight. So that practice game that I did in the afternoon was absolutely essential uh, for for 
for Monday evening to go well. What do I think of Stroganoff? Well, the video that I did, which is live, uh, which is my tutorial and solo playthrough, was sponsored by Game Brewer. You know, I, I would recommend going and checking out the video because you'll get an idea of, of, of how it plays from that. Right, that is all of the board games that I've been playing since the last video log. It's a lot, but bearing in mind, I did take January off paid work uh, in order to play more games. Although... It didn't seem like there's a lot when I was writing this up, but actually there's a lot there. I mean, five games of Too Many Bones, four games of Lord of the Rings, four games of Maracaibo. That's 40 hours of content just there. <laughs> and not to mention all of the other ones. Right, let's go into other content that I've done. Also on the channel, uh, Drake Hollow. So Drake Hollow is a computer game uh, and I was playing it in January. So there's about five videos of that online if you're interested in that. It's a crafting survival game. But it, it's done in a different way, and I really enjoyed it. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't have carried on playing it. Um, and I would like to carry on playing it, it's just I don't have the time at the moment. So, yeah, Drake Hollow, really good computer game, really enjoyed it. Lovely graphics, very good gameplay. Yeah, just thought it was a great game, and there's four or five videos on that on my channel if you want to see them. Also, I did a couple of streams of Gloomhaven Digital. I'd, I'd love to play Gloomhaven Digital more. I'd love to take the week off and just play Gloomhaven Digital, because it's fantastic, and I love it, and I think they've done a brilliant job with the game, um, and the Guildmaster mode for Gloomhaven Digital is just, just brilliant. Um, I did a live unboxing of Cubitos, um, which is a game that AEG, a AEG sent me. Um, I wasn't expecting it, I didn't ask for it, but uh, I do get on quite well with John D. Clare and the people at AEG, so they sent me a copy of it, so I did an unboxing video of it. I will get around to playing it at some point. Um, I did a live unboxing of Tainted Grail Wave 2, which was slightly embarrassing, okay? Tainted Grail Wave 2, huge box, loads of stuff in there. I did an unboxing where I showed off all of the stuff, except for the big box with all of the really nice miniatures in, okay? I'd taken that out of the big box, put it on the floor next to me, did the whole unboxing video, left it on the floor did the end of the unboxing video, said goodbye, looked down and went, oh yeah, there's a big box of miniatures down there. So the unboxing video of Tainted Grail Wave 2 is on the channel now, but be aware if you watch it, you're not going to see everything. So <laughs> apologies for that. Uh, I did a live Q&A on the 27th of January, and I've got another live Q&A coming in a couple of weeks' time. That is my regular monthly live Q&A where people ask me a whole bunch of random questions. Uh, they're always good fun. Uh, I really enjoy them. So that's on the channel now if you want to watch it. And I launched a new series. Um, so it went live last week, and this is the start of a new series purely funded through the Patreon page. Um, top 10s. I don't do many top 10 videos, okay? Other channels do top 10 videos, and they get huge amounts of views and engagement. Um, without going into too much detail, and a huge thank you to everybody who is watching this video, but also my other videos, my viewing figures and engagement is continuing to drop, okay? Now, you might not think that. You might go to my videos and go, wow, Paul, this video is great. It's got X amount of views. Overall, views and engagement on my videos are going down. Other people are doing loads of top 10 videos and getting loads and loads of views and engagement. So, I thought, I, and I've always been a bit nervous about to, doing top 10 videos. So, I've decided I'm starting a new series. It started last week and it's going to be one every two months, and it's going to be top tens. The first one is on the channel now, uh, and it is the top ten games of all time, but the thing that's different with these top ten videos, which I think makes them stand out a little bit from other people's top ten videos, although it hasn't really had that many views, um, is that these aren't my top tens. It's my patron supporters. So uh, what I do is I, I pick a topic... And the first topic was best games of all time. And my Patreon supporters, they vote. And then what I do is I collate all of those votes and I get together with a co-host and we talk about those games and we give our opinions. So it isn't my top 10 games of all time. It's my Patreon supporters' top 10 of all time, which I think is actually a better sample. It was 300 people rather than one. And I know a lot of people will want to know my top 10 games of all time, but I'm just one person. So this was the votes of 300 people all put together in a video, and then I give my comments on those. And some of the games talked about would definitely be in my top 10, and some of the games talked about would not be in my top 10. 
But that video is on the channel now. It's the start of a new series. I really appreciate any views, any comments, uh, or anything really uh, on the video. That would be great. And the next one is going to be with special guest Mike Fitzgerald. Uh, and we're going to be doing top 10 deck builders. That's coming in March. Uh, and if you are a patron supporter of mine, uh, you will be getting a message over email at some point in February asking you to vote on what your favourite deck builder is. So that's the top 10 videos. Um, and that's, that's about all of the content that I've produced. Rule books that I've been working on. Uh, Euthea is still ongoing, although that is, that is starting to get wrapped up. Batman is dragging on. I'm really happy with where Batman is. But then the more people we get involved to check it, the more, prob not problems, but the more suggestions they have and it makes us rethink it again. So Batman is looking really good. Um, and it's, it's not due for a while anyway, but I want to get it wrapped up soon. Uh, I'm working on the rulebook for High Rise with Gil Hover, the new version of the rulebook for that. I've been doing that this morning. Uh, Keeper at Sea, as I mentioned, and Stars of Akarios, as I mentioned. I've got a few other ones going on in the background as well, but there is rulebook work rumbling around. Right, let's move on to a Patreon update. So January was an awesome month for new patron supporters. A huge thank you to all of my new patron supporters in January. Uh, thank you very much for supporting the channel. And as some of you know, I basically took January off from my paid work in order to basically live stream all month and it was all non-sponsored videos. Um, so yeah, it was, it was basically a bit of a Patreon drive, a bit of a Patreon boost. I didn't want to advertise it as a Patreon drive, um, but that's kind of what it was. And yeah, thank you to all of my new supporters. I'll put an image on screen now. This is all of the new supporters in the month of January. Uh, so thank you very much to all of my new supporters, including the people who've increased their pledge level. Uh, obviously a big thank you to everybody who is a, uh, a patron supporter of mine prior to January, but that's just all of the new people. Also, special thanks to a couple of people. First of all, uh, Jeff Wessel. Uh, Jeff contacted me. He's a recent patron supporter, um, but he basically said that he... I can't remember the words he used, but basically he said he wanted to backdate the Patreon support um, because he's been watching my videos, I think, for quite a while, but only recently become a Patreon supporter. So he was like, how can I do this? I want uh, He said, I want to become a Patreon supporter now, but I also want to give you something for the last year's worth. Um, so it's very nice of you, Jeff. Thank you very much. Uh, and what Jeff has done is Jeff has basically given me a, uh, an extra donation onto the Patreon page uh, for a couple of months and then he'll drop back down to a normal level. So that's much appreciated. Also, special thanks to Jason Roller. Uh, Jason contacted me and said, Paul, I love your stuff, uh, but I don't really want to get into the monthly subscription thing with Patreon. So how can I support your channel? Um, and I'm mentioning this now for two reasons. I'm mentioning it obviously because I want to say thank you to Jason for your one-off donation. But also, if you're watching this and you also don't want to get involved in the monthly thing of Patreon, but you want to support the channel, then please contact me because there are there are things that you can do. Um, the best way of doing things, and I say the best way, this is not the best way for me, but this is this is the best way from a company accounting point of view. And bearing in mind, my partner Vicky is an accountant. She knows the right the way to do these things. The advantage of using Patreon is the whole grey area of tax and what country you're in and everything else. Patreon handles that. So if you wanted to make a one-off donation to me, the best way of doing it is actually via Patreon. And you, like if you wanted to give me like, you know, $20, you join my Patreon, you put the monthly thing at $20 and the next month you cancel it. And that way the money all goes through the proper channels and all of the tax boxes are ticked and everything else. Anyway, thank you very much for all of your support because without your support, none of this would be possible. Contest wise, so yeah, you will know that I run contests each month. Last month I ran two contests and they were both big ones. First of all, um, and, and thank you to Cheap Theory Games for doing this. Um, so when, when Cheap Theory Games found out I was doing all of those videos for Too Many Bones, as I say, they weren't sponsored. I didn't get paid a penny for creating those videos, but Cheap Theory Games wanted to say thank you to me by giving, uh, by donating some prizes for me to give away to my patron supporters. So I had a copy of Too Many Bones, the base game, and a, a copy of Undertow. Too Many Bones was won uh, by Sarah, Sarah Bogbonici. Sarah's been an executive supporter of mine for two years. 
Uh, so thank you very much, Sarah, for your support over the last couple of years. And congratulations on winning Too Many Bones. I've spoken to you via email, so hopefully all that's in hand. And the winner of Undertow was Jason Pinto, who's been a Patreon supporter of mine since the end of January. So it just shows you that literally anybody can win these contests. Jason was a brand new Patreon supporter, only started supporting me in January and won a contest. Sarah's been with me for two years as an executive producer and Sarah won the other contest. So yeah, thank you very much to you uh, for all of your support. This month's contest is to win a copy of Hansa Teutonica, the big box edition. So this is, uh, yeah, thank you to Pegasus Games. You may remember months and months and months ago, I did a video, uh, a tutorial and playthrough of Hansa Teutonica. It's on the channel. If you want to go and watch it, I did it with Meeple University um, and I did that and that's there. As part of that arrangement, I said to them, I will be happy to create this video for you. Would you be able to give me a copy of Hansa Teutonica Big Box so that I can give it away on a future giveaway? And they said yes. So that's the contest for this month. What do you need to do to enter the contest? Absolutely nothing, right? If you are a patron supporter of mine at producer level or higher, you don't need to do anything. If you are a patron supporter but not a producer level and you want to be in with the chance of winning it, then you could increase your support to producer level and then if you wanted to drop it back down afterwards, that's absolutely fine. Uh, and if you're not a supporter of mine but you want to be in with the chance of winning Hansa Teutonica, then Maybe now's the time to support me on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Um, <clears throat> and it's basically, if you are a patron supporter by the end of this month, so you have to you have to join up to the Patreon at producer level or higher by the 28th of February. Oh yeah, it's only 28 days in February, isn't it? So you've got less than two weeks. You've got 11 days from now. 10 days probably from when this video goes out. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much to Pegasus Games for a copy of Hansa Teutonica, the big box edition. Right, future stuff. What have I got planned for the next few weeks? Well, I'm doing the video log today. Tomorrow, I am doing another rulebook test for a game called Dom Pierre. Don't go to Board Game Geek and look this up because it's not on there. It might be now, but it wasn't yesterday. Uh, Dom Pierre is a game by uh, Roller and Costa, who are the designers of uh, Yinzi, Six Castles, Cafe. It's their new game. Um, I don't know much about it, but it, uh, it's arrived today. The physical prototype has arrived today. They've sent me the rule book, and tomorrow I will be doing another behind the scenes video for my patron supporters where I learn how to play the game from the rule book with the designers of the game watching and going, oh, Paul got really stuck on this bit, or you know, whatever. It's, it's designed to test the rule book to make sure the rule book is good. And if the rule book's not good, I will be giving them feedback on what they need to do to make the rulebook better. That's tomorrow. Friday, I will start filming the streets video. So this is the how to play video for streets. It's going to take me probably, um, the script is written. It's probably going to be about three or four days of work. So I'm going to start it on Friday uh, and then I'm going to finish it next week. I have tonight, I have Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. As I say, I'm saying tonight, but by the time you watch this video, it will already have happened. And Friday of this week, I'm going back to Maracaibo because I really want to get those campaigns finished. Uh, next week, I will be doing a, a solo game of Keeper at Sea. But again, this is going to be another Patreon exclusive behind the scenes video because I'm basically testing the rule book. So I hope you understand that, that kind of video can't really go out to the public because if the rule book's terrible, it looks bad for the game. OK, but if the rule book's terrible, that's the whole point of the video. Some of the rulebook tests that I've done in the last few weeks, the rulebooks have been bad, really bad. That's the whole point of publishers commissioning me to test their rulebook so they know what they need to fix. And yeah, I don't feel that that video should ever go public. Um, I've got more rulebook work planned. I've got another live Q&A, which will be next week, next Wednesday, a week today. Um, and then at the end of this month, so at the end of February, is Castle Tricon. Castle Tricon is a free-to-attend online virtual gaming convention put on by Czech Games Edition, uh, Horrible Guild, and Heidelbar Games. Uh, and I'm going to be live streaming Under Falling Skies. So you can attend the virtual convention. Just go to castletricon.com. Um, but yeah, I will be streaming, playing through the campaign of Under Falling Skies on the Friday evening and the Saturday afternoon. That's the end of this month. And then very, very exciting, but also quite scary, Weather Machine. Vital Lacerda's new 
probably super heavy, super complex game that he says, oh, he's actually really light, which isn't really light. Um, I'm going to be starting on that. Um, uh, I'm basically being commissioned to write the rulebook for the game, and that work starts in a couple of weeks' time. It's going to be a massive amount of work. I've done the rule books for uh, the Gallerist Escape Plan on Mars. They are months of work, so I'm 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 scared because I know just how much work it's going to be. But also, Vittel's a great guy. I love his games. I really respect him and like him as a person. And I've worked with him now for years. So yeah, really looking forward to that. Other non-gaming related news. A few bits of information for you. Uh, well, the first one is gaming related. I've been doing a lot of painting. Painting for me is my escape from all of the work, time off, and here's some photos on screen of some of the things that I've been painting in the last few weeks. I've been painting more miniatures from the Batman Gotham City Chronicles game. Uh, I've been painting some more miniatures from the Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth game. Uh, and I'm pleased to say this is the whites. I finished these last night. Um, and... I have gone over to the dark side and I have finally bought some contrast paints. Um, I, I won't go into too much detail here um, about why I've decided, why I didn't get contrast paints at first and now why I have got contrast paints and I'm still learning how to use them, but I have a lot of regret that I didn't get these contrast paints earlier because a lot of the figures that I've painted in the last six months or even year would have been quicker with contrast paints, and some of them definitely would have been better, okay? And, and I know that, uh, and it was just my stubbornness that didn't want to get the contrast paints when they came out, and I, and I should have done. Um, so yeah, and I'm, and I'm gonna buy more. I bought 15 of them, and there's definitely about five more that I, I wanna buy. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> most of my future, uh, I'm not using contrast paints exclusively, those whites that I put on screen earlier. Some of the bits on those whites were actually painted with uh, normal paints, and I'm actually mixing some of the contrast paints with some of the shades, whether you're supposed to do that or not, I don't know. Um, but anyway, I've been doing quite a bit of painting, uh, and I'm going to be doing more of it. Other things that have been happening, uh, me and Vicky on Saturday, we did a Jaffa cake baking thing, so um, yeah, it's the, it's the Boozy Bakers, it's, it's a YouTube channel in the UK, where every Saturday afternoon they do a workshop, they do it live on YouTube, and you watch along and you make something with them. And they did Jaffa cakes on Saturday, so we made some Jaffa Cakes. Picture on screen of uh, us making them. Uh, and here are the end results. Um, would I make them again? Probably not. It was fun. It was a really good, uh, an enforced break from work on a Saturday afternoon. And it was something that me and Vicky did together. Uh, but they, they weren't very tasty. The orange wasn't very orangey. Um, the sponge wasn't really the same. So it was fun to do. Um, and it was a bit of a laugh and we enjoyed doing it, but we probably wouldn't do it again. Other things you may have seen just off camera. I wanted to give you a Millennium Falcon update. Now, bear in mind, this isn't mine, right? This, this was my present to Vicky for Christmas. I am not making this, this is all her, right? Uh, I made one of the feet, but that's it. This is what Vicky's making. She's been at this for a few weeks and she's got a lot more time. And I didn't just want to put a photo of it on screen. I wanted, and I am so nervous about breaking it. I wanted to actually, it is so heavy. I wanted to show you the scale of this thing, right? <laughs> this, this is really this big. This is huge, okay? Now, it's very, very heavy, and I'm very nervous because if I drop this, um, we're not married, but there would be a divorce on the cards if we were. Um, I'll try and show you the back. The back is starting to get done now, but the amount of detail on the inside is incredible. Um, so yeah, this, this was my Christmas present to Vicky for basically five years of not getting her any Christmas presents. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I don't spend that much on her every Christmas, <laughs> if you think I do. Um, yeah, and it, it's fantastic. So I don't know how much longer she's got with it, probably another few weeks. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, that's everything. Yeah, I think we're all done. I, I've, I've waffled on long enough. As I mentioned at the start, I'm curious to know what your favourite part of these video logs is. Is it, is it the personal stuff at the end? Do you want me to talk more about personal stuff that I've been doing? The fact that we haven't had any snow and everybody else has had snow and I love snow. Uh, do you want me to talk more about the rule books that I've been working on? Do you want me to talk more about um, 
the behind the scenes videos that I've done or anything else. I'm just curious as to know what your favorite part of, the, of these video logs are. But that's it, we're all done. I'm gonna wrap up now. I'm gonna go and edit this video and get it all done. Thank you again to all of my Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. I did get one message. It was a comment on one of my YouTube videos a couple of weeks ago and it really made me think. And it was one of the videos that I did where I said, these videos are only made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign, blah, 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 you know, the usual stuff. And somebody wrote to me and he said, um, why, why do you need money to make these videos? Now, there's two responses to that. The one response is, what do you mean, you idiot? That's a stupid question. And then the other one is like, no, wait a minute. I get that. Because so many people are making board game videos. So many people are out there making videos about board games. And surely you just do it in your spare time. Why should we pay you to make videos? Okay, and it really, really made me think. But the honest answer is, it's Wednesday afternoon, right? Planning this video log took me a few hours. Filming this video log has taken however long it's taken, but I've had to set all of the lighting up. I've, I've had to set all of this up. Um, I've had to get dressed. You know, I don't normally get dressed. I had to get dressed. Well, I, I guess I didn't need to, but that would be a different type of video. Um, then it's gonna take me about three or four hours to edit this video, then render it, then check it, then fix it, right? In total, Creating a video log like this, for me anyway, takes me a huge amount of work, many, many hours of work. And those hours are hours which I could have been actually doing paid work. So for me, uh, I'm in the position where a lot of the content that I create, and certainly most of that stuff I've spoken about earlier on in this video log, is basically me taking time away from the paid work in order to produce the content. And that's what the Patreon is for, right? The Patreon gives me the financial flexibility to be able to take time away from the paid work to produce other content that, that people want to watch. So yes, thank you to all of my Patreon supporters, because yes, like I said, without you, this video wouldn't be possible because I wouldn't be able to afford taking the time off work. Um, but also, it's, it's not just the financial support. It's your continued support uh, on both comments on the videos and obviously on the Slack channel and places like that that keeps me going on a day-to-day -day basis. I don't talk openly about my mental health, health issues as much as some people do, but, and I try to put on a brave face with all of my live streams and videos like this, but trust me, every day is a struggle, okay? Whilst I might not talk about it and I might not show it, every day is a struggle. And I know other people are in exactly the same position. The world is a difficult place right now. We all need to support each other. And I just wanted to say a huge thank you to all of the people that have reached out to me in various ways to offer your support to me because I need it and I know a lot of other people need it as well. Anyway, on that note, that's not on the script. I wasn't planning to say that. I just got carried away there for a minute. <laughs> thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.